three, two, one. Welcome to Toronto TV. I'm the host, Joseph Lau. Today we have a guest, Carol Wong, and she's been to, she's from Caribbean and Hong Kong, and now settled in Canada, and she wrote five books. And then one of the series that um, my letters to my grandchildren. Hello, Carol, how are you? Oh, I'm very good, thank you, considering we are in a pandemic. Yeah, sure. We're, <laughs> we're almost over now, so. Yes, yeah. that's okay. right. We're still, using the, we're still using the new technology Zoom to do the interview, all right? So yes. um, my first question is that, can you introduce yourself, like where you're born and why you settled in Canada? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Carol Wong, and my Hakka Chinese name is Mui Lan Fun. I am married to Edward Wong, so mm -hmm. I am, uh, I would say, Wong Tai Tai. <laughs> uh, I, um, my, my parents are um, originally Hakka uh, immigrants. Actually, my ancestors, um, okay. many years ago, in, uh, since 1938, when slavery was abolished, the uh, British needed indentured laborers on the sugar plantation. And uh, so they had drafted the, um, the Chinese from Hong Kong. And my Hakka ancestors were one of those who went to Jamaica during the uh, early, 1800, early, early 1900, because mm -hmm. it was abolished 1938. Okay. And then over time, they, um, when the contract was over, they were um, allowed to stay or go back to China. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they uh, they were, I guess, the start of um, communism in, in, in China. So uh, my ancestors decided to stay mm -hmm. as young men. And uh, so they went into, not naturally went into business because um, they were not uh, really cut out for being uh, manual laborers. Mm -hmm. So the business, of course, thrived because the Hakka people work very hard and they save very hard. So mm -hmm. as a result, the business grew and they needed help. So they sent for their relatives, especially their young nephews, like my father, who came eventually to help in his uncle's shop. Mm -hmm. And as a result, he earned, he learned to speak, uh, I guess, Jamaican Patwa and English to open his own business, got married, and then I was born in Jamaica, myself and um, five other siblings. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's our, that's my original history. Mm -hmm. But I'm very thankful that I grew up um, in Jamaica because we learned um, the Jamaican culture and as well received excellent British education. Okay. So that's what I think contributed to my writing mm -hmm. and being part of the, um, the, the new, the, uh, I guess you call it the National Archives of Canada book project um, mm -hmm. in 2017 to celebrate the Canada 150 anniversary since Confederation. Okay. Then uh, they wanted stores of immigrants uh, to as a project for their archives. So when I was interviewed, they realized I came to Canada three times. Mm -hmm. So they asked me to write three books. And um, by that time, I was a grandmother. So I was very pleased to pass on my stories in books and actually letters to my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so the first, my first migration uh, was after the, um, as I said, excellent education in Jamaica mm -hmm. for high school. Then I went to um, the Montreal to uh, university and my uh, husband at the time, my, my school friend also went to McGill University. Hmm. So um, this, this this book one tells all that because then after graduation we eventually got married mm -hmm. and went to went back to Jamaica and lived a very 
um, I would say by that time, luxurious because mm -hmm. of all the sacrifices of the uh, relatives and helping each other. We lived a very good life in Jamaica. It was, you could say, paradise. Okay. In, a, in, in a tropical country with summer all year round. Everybody goes to Jamaica now, so they know what I'm talking about. And no snow, right? So. <laughs> yeah, no snow whatsoever. Yeah. But I did get the experience from living in Canada mm -hmm. in, uh, in the 1960s when we were in Canada. So we also, um, my husband practices engineering, while I also... Um, got a job with the airline and, of course, helping the family business, which mm -hmm. by then had grown from little Chinese shop to a supermarket. Okay. And then, um, and then in the 70s, uh, there was political turmoil in Jamaica that caused um, the, the middle class people in Jamaica to leave and, of course, the majority of Chinese. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is what ended book one. Okay. And then, uh, then now, I proceeded to go to book two, which tells of arriving in in Canada. Again. Again, the second time. Yeah. And then by that time, we of course we headed to Montreal because we had such a fabulous time in um, mm -hmm. in Montreal. But then they were having the separatist movement. Mm -hmm. So we figured we wouldn't jump from one fire to another. Okay. So we packed up our belongings. Actually, they were, the trailer was not even unpacked. So we headed over to Ontario. Mm -hmm. So this is getting to Ontario. Okay. And then when my husband got a job to work on the new airport in Hong Kong mm -hmm. in the late 1970s and 80s, then um, this is when my interest in my Hakka culture opened up. Okay. And uh, because we grew up in Jamaica and we were minority in Jamaica, actually my father's business was the only uh, Chinese store in the entire district. Okay. So I was the only Chinese, my siblings and I were the only Chinese in a school full of uh, Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have much of a hot dog culture, um, except in the home. Okay. And uh, whenever we met our relatives, and of course, when we go to the city where yeah. there's a hot dog association and weddings, you know. Yeah. So, so that's when, we, when I went to Hong Kong. And thankfully, I don't know if thankfully or not, but um, I lived an expatriate life, um, which is something that my Cantonese friends from Hong Kong do not really know about. Um, because we work for, an, um, my husband worked for an American company. We lived in uh, Braemar Hill, which is Braemar Hill Mansions, mm -hmm. which I will try to say in Cantonese, Choi Sai Wu Choi Sai Wu, yes, in Bangkok. Yeah. Uh, and I know Boma Sando yeah. <laughs> how okay. to get there and to guide yeah. my taxi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we had a great experience. Actually, I think it's the best time of our family life because yeah. by then we had children. Mm -hmm. We were having small children, so they benefited also from a British education, yeah. from kindergarten to primary school. And my eldest son was in high school by the time we left. Mm -hmm. And I absorbed everything uh, about my Chinese culture. Okay. And my the Kent, I was fluent. Believe it or not, I was fluent in Cantonese. Okay. Yeah. I went to the Hong Kong University because I was studying um, Chinese painting, mm -hmm. and my low C um, had us writing um, Chinese as well. Okay. So I went to Hong Kong University. And of course, the professors were very helpful. And um, they even told me that I told them about my um, experience also getting around Hong Kong and as a housewife shopping as well. So they uh, uh, advised me to go to learn market Cantonese at the YWCA in mid-level on okay. Hong Kong Island. Mm -hmm. So um, that opened up my ability to converse 
um, with the local people and to go everywhere. Okay. I did. I I put on my walking shoes whenever the kids were in school, mm -hmm. and I walked all over Hong Kong from okay. Primar Hill Road going down uh, to Causeway Bay. Mm -hmm. I had such a grand time. Yeah. And my children as well was exposed to um, uh, playing with the local Chinese children as mm -hmm. well as the British children. Okay. So they saw two sides of the story. Mm -hmm. Then to our good fortune, then Xiaoping started opening the doors around um, 1979. Mm -hmm. So we could freely go in and find my father's ancestral village. Okay. And, yeah. And his Hakka village was just close to, um, we say Chimjun, but it's Somchan. Okay, in, yeah. In Kenton, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shen Shen uh, in Mandarin. Yeah. And um, it was so sentimental to mm -hmm. go to my father's house and uh, sit uh, at, at, the, at his table and lay in my grandmother's bed and her rocking chair. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it was such a great feeling. And they also, uh, my cousins, my relatives, all the Xiangui, Mm -hmm. Chiang Mai in Cantonese, yeah. way in Mandarin. Uh, they they all lived in that part of New Fu, New Fu Hakka village, mm -hmm. which is in Bao An County. Bao An County, okay. In, yeah. Yes, in Guangdong. Yeah. So they took me also to the hill where where they had my grandmother's bones um, in jars in the in the in the in the little what they call posture. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, there was a village lake and all the other relatives I could find their, their parents and grandparents' houses. So okay. it was a wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, every time we had visitors or we had time, we could easily take, at that time, we did, had to take the train to Lo Wu mm -hmm. and then cross over and to to get a minibus at the time to get to our village, about three miles away. Yeah. So that uh, that why I thought this was the best uh, opportunity for our family. Okay. Up to this day, mm -hmm. was to go back and find our uh, ancestral village. Yeah. And then um, after my husband's contract was finished, I mm -hmm. came back and uh, to Scarborough where we lived and eventually moved up to Markham. Yeah. Uh, and Unionville was just north of where we lived and they were just building houses. Mm -hmm. so as a result, it was uh, uh, affordable. Yeah. And um, they, although my children were only Chinese again mm -hmm. <laughs> at the time yeah. in 1980. Yeah. And um, I got involved with the association mm -hmm. because Coming from Jamaica as a minority, I know that to, to um, combat any racism mm -hmm. or any prejudice, you got to educate people. Yeah. So I went, I, I, I like playing tennis. That's mm -hmm. something I learned in uh, Jamaica in the, as, a, as a child as well. Yeah. We played tennis and badminton and was quite involved with the association there. So mm -hmm. I joined the tennis club and I um, educated everyone about uh, where Jamaica is. At that time, no one was really, uh, mm -hmm. I guess the tourist industry in Jamaica had not um, really promoted as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So at the time, and then on top of that, I had a Caribbean night with Jamaica food and Jamaica music and mm -hmm. limbo dancing. Okay. And, and as a result, I was very welcomed and I became the president. And when I left, I also got lifetime membership and a beautiful plaque. Yeah. So it goes to show and I'm, I write in my book for my grandchildren and children yeah. to let them realize that racism is everywhere. You have to combat it with education and move on. Mm -hmm. And um, And also... Um, give up yourself. So if I didn't do all this volunteer work, then um, 
then, you know, our family would not be accepted. Myself on the ladies' team, my husband on the men's team, my children in this children program, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, um, I was very fortunate to have discovered the historic village of Unionville just mm -hmm. by driving around okay. and knowing my environment. Yeah. Because I, I, I was really impressed with that street, which reminded me of Jamaica. Because mm. they um, they preserve the historic society, preserve all the old buildings, as you know. Yeah. They are converted into business now. Mm -hmm. But it's my pride and joy to take all my visitors and get involved in the whole of Unionville and Markham. Mm -hmm. So that that covers the, uh, the, the the second book, integrating into Canada. Okay. And then yeah, and then my third book now is even getting more involved with the city of Markham. Okay. And also with the Hakka Association. Since I came back from Hong Kong yeah. with my Hakka Awareness Awakened, yeah. I became president of the Chungjin Hakka Association. Mm -hmm. And I um, was successful in getting the Jamaican Chinese to come together. Mm -hmm. And we had classes because most of us were not fluent in our hot dog dialect. Yeah. And cooking and dancing and music, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so um, it's actually continuing. Okay. And with the city of Markham as well, um, I got involved in the Markham Olympic bid. We mm -hmm. did not win it that year, but it got me... Uh, helping in other fields, like the Markham Art Council, yeah. the chief film circuit of the Markham Theatre, mm -hmm. and also involved with the Unionville High School. And the um, and we got the tennis club as well. The current mayor, um, Mayor Scarpetti, yeah. he, uh, he used to come as a counselor. Yeah. Then he came as a vice uh, uh, a, a vice, um, I guess, uh, I guess one of the councillors, the regional councillors. Then yeah. when he became the mayor, he was quite familiar with me. Mm -hmm. And um, by then, the Chinese migration from Hong Kong started. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, he you now is wise to um, recognize that the Chinese play a vital part in the in, in making um, Markham what it is now. Mm -hmm. So as a result, he was very supportive of the bid to host the World Hakka Conference uh, mm -hmm. during the pandemic. Yeah. He eventually had it last June. Yes. And we had the world coming to Markham. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so said, so done. I was awarded, um, I was awarded the Mayor uh, Hall of Fame mm -hmm. award. So, he recognized my contribution. Yeah. And then now, after being president of Chungjin Hakka Association in, uh, in Scarborough, after my presidency, I figured I sh we should get the Hakka, all the Hakka together. Mm -hmm. Because the Hakkas were like um, gypsies all over the world. Yes. So we formed the Toronto Hakka Heritage Alliance. Mm. And with the support of the Chinese Cultural Center of Greater Toronto, mm -hmm. we host every year a Spring Blossom Ball, uh, and we became part of the Scarborough Summer Fest yes. with our Toronto Hakka mm -hmm. Festival on the Saturdays of the weekend. Mm -hmm. So we're able to keep the um, we the Toronto Hakka Heritage Alliance consists of uh, ten Hakka associations. Okay. And that re those represent the diasporas of the Hakkas in in Ontario, which comes from India, the mo the largest from India, Mauritius, South Africa, Malaysia, Trinidad, Jamaica, mm -hmm. and Indonesia. Okay. So this is what we are currently doing, mm -hmm. and. Um, I might, uh, not might, but I would like to invite you to our our project this year. We are coming back in person mm -hmm. and we have been, the federal uh, government has granted us uh, a grant yeah. for 
uh, which we title Passing on Tradition, or okay. Haka Tradition, of course. Mm -hmm. So we're going to meet once a month for the year 2023 to have Hakga conversation classes, Hakga mm. cooking, and most of all, the oral history of our elders. I see. Yes, because we all have different experiences uh, migrating out of China mm. into all the countries, I yeah. would say, over the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is it in a nutshell. Yeah. But um, this is the third one. Mm -hmm. And when I was finished with this one, the National Archives said, but you are not finished <laughs> because okay. I ended because I ended this one with the um, with the Hakka conference in 2024. Okay. So they gave me another ISBN number. So uh -huh. I do have a fourth volume okay. to, um, to, yeah. to, to work on. Okay. But in the meantime, during the just before the pandemic, my children who have grown up and graduated and they're now living in Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. One son is in uh, Vancouver mm -hmm. and one lives here. We yeah. had a we had a, a reunion in Florida because mm -hmm. my grandkids are uh, were young and wanted to see uh, Mickey Mouse. Okay. <laughs> so we were in Orlando. Yeah. And then because we were in a villa um, with 15 of us, we mm -hmm. had time to sit and talk. Yeah. And by them asking me questions, and I'm trying to pass on my life stories too, yeah. I have um, come up with uh, another um, series of book mm -hmm. called Conversation with a Hot Dog Dragon Lady. Okay. And these books are on Amazon as well. Yeah. And um, these... Uh, this format is a question and answer. Mm. So the question they, they ask me and then my answer with photographs are in these books. Okay. So these are also, I'm going to talk about these books at the Cornell Community Center in Markham uh, two weeks time. Mm -hmm. Because it is so important for us to pass on our life story. Yeah. So I'm going to speak to the older adult club mm -hmm. and encourage everyone to write their story. They do not have to publish a book. Yeah. They can um, write their whatever they remember. Oh, whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you too, Joseph, and <laughs> your <laughs> grandparents, if they're still around, or a granduncle or an aunt who remembers. Yeah. Write down, write down what they have to say, so that the next generation will have it to pass on to future mm. generations. Yeah. So that's where I am at at the moment, and the home isolation of the pandemic mm -hmm. has um, has given me um, this opportunity to stay home and do some some do more the, writing. Writing, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you see me around. You see me yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. But I still see you around. You get more time to writing. Because of <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. And every day I go to the Honke um, uh, yeah. dance and fitness dance club. Exercise. Yeah. Hmm. Every morning, I think, right? So. Yes. That's so enough. that's it's included in my third volume as well. Okay. Because that's an excellent uh, club. Mm -hmm. and we, um, all the money raised goes to charity. Yeah. And it's really a camaraderie, no matter yeah. where we come from. Mm -hmm. We get together. Ultimately, after exercise, we're going to dim some. Dim some, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's how in King Square, is that right? <laughs> we go to King Square and also in New Kennedy Square. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we have that's... different branches. Okay. Yeah. We have yeah. different branches all over uh, all over Toronto, some yeah. over in Elgin Mills, first yeah. Markham Square as well. Okay. And I think it's excellent for the for the mall to yeah. um to give us space yes. and um to exercise mm -hmm. because later on we patronize all the stores after. Yeah, so yeah, supermarket and uh, dim sum yeah. and uh, everything mm -hmm. else. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, and, and also it brings the community. Now that mm -hmm. I look back, it brings yeah. the community together. Okay, 
So one question. Basically, I'm Hakka too. Uh, <clears throat> my father born in Xinan. Uh, it's close to Meixian. It's oh, Meixian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I only been to my, you know, Xinan one time. When I have about ten teenager, my father brought the whole family back to the place where she, where he's born. He was born. Yes. So at that time, the traffic in China is so bad. <clears throat> you mentioned that. Then we crossed Luohu, go to Shenzhen. Yes. And take the bus from Shenzhen to Xinan. Okay, that's yes. the. I remember probably that's about eight hours <clears throat> time. That's dry. So, yes. and then you know, in the Chinese New Year, we got lots of like luggages sitting on the on my lap, and then mm -hmm. bouncing the road. The road is too bad. Then I, then I talk to myself, say, "Hey, China is a poor. I mean, at that time, the condition is is not not good, not so modernized. Yes. So why bother? We travel eight hours bus time to back go back to a village." That's so rural, so not mo not so modernized. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I keep complaining. No, of course, I don't complain to my father. I just talk to myself. Say hey, that's the complaint. But yeah. at the time when the bus passed through the field, you know, those then I smell a little bit different taste of the land, the earth, the mud. See it? It's something different. It's different from what I smell in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Probably that's that's the hometown smell, right? <laughs> <laughs> and after that, then I had never had a chance to go back to <clears throat> to I mean to the, the the hometown, the home village, but my my brother did. Yeah, we still have some relatives in in that in their places. All right. So, but at the time, I really do appreciate that you have the time, resources to write down your lifelong history lifelong journey right so you know as i run my toronto tv i at one time i have an idea say why don't i shoot a documentary about my family my relatives my uncles my mom my dad because they we they were born in china moved to hong kong now my brother's in u.s i'm in toronto my sister in vancouver and also one in still have some relatives in Taiwan. And then and because of the political instability, so we even have some uncles, they moved from the hometown to Jiangxi and they changed the family name. It's because they were my <clears throat> my mother's father is a landlord. All right. So mm -hmm. he was like, I mean, badly treated during the cultural revolution, something like that, or the, you know, the, the change of the political scenario. So that means, in, that means some of my uncles, they have to change family name and move to North, to Jiangxi. So that, I think Jiangxi is, who have some Hakka heritage over there. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, actually the next Hakka, uh, we hosted in Markham, we, for the first time in Canada, we yeah. hosted the 31st World Hakka Conference. Yeah. Now the 32nd yeah. um, Hakka Conference coming up in November is going yeah. to be in Jiangxi. Yes. In Longland. In Longland. Yeah. So, yeah. So then, then I talk and then I have to show my idea of like making a documentary about our family and my brother strongly objected. Okay. Yeah, when we look at the history, we have happiness, but at the same time, we may have sadness, right? Mm -hmm. Are we going to tell the, the, the sadness, the conflict, the misfortune in that history? So, all right, the question back to you, say, you mentioned that racism in your, in your books, right? Did you put in those unhappy time in your books? Uh, yes. We you, you put it in because it's life. And we are happy. We are not happy all the time. Yeah. There's sadness and also how you overcome it. 
Mm. So that the, your readers, including um, the readers, not only my children, my children yeah. are not going to be interested until later on. But yeah. my readers, this is what they like about it. Mm -hmm. Because they see, they see that they are not the only one going through the problem and mm -hmm. what could have been done. Yeah. We, we, we can only improve and learn from others and the experience from others. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm very fortunate that I was chosen to be part of this um, this mm -hmm. project. It's called Canada 150, or stories, or or stories, or lives. Okay. And um, yes, and as a result, I think um, the next generation can learn from that. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you know everything, and then we can because I have learned from my parents as well. Yeah. When they came to Jamaica, um, it was a small wooden shop mm -hmm. and we lived behind and, you know, we, we had no running water. We had no electricity. Mm. So I learned to clean the, the lampshade, yeah. you know, and also cope with, uh, with going to the river or yeah. with the servants to That's get water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So those, those were the days right there. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah. and this is why I want to pass that on so my grandchildren and great-grandchildren can appreciate the sacrifices mm. because they also got a lot of abuse, I would say abuse from the local people as well, okay. Yeah, you know, because yeah. the Chinese history, whenever the population is in uh, frustrated or, you know, have anything mm. to the government, they yeah. cannot lash out at the government. Yeah, so they, they lash out at the people nearest to them. Mm -hmm. And there was a Chinese in every, a Chinese shop in every neighborhood. Okay. And as children, I wrote about growing up and they're calling me names. Yeah. And we would curse them and throw stones and run away. Mm -hmm. You know, so my children can understand okay. that um, a little abuse or something said on social media is not going to kill them. Yeah. You rise above it, mm -hmm. rise above it, and succeed <laughs> on top of that. I see. You know, so, yeah. yeah. You do mention two words. One is the racism, right? So mm -hmm. that word we talked about many years ago, but now it still exists in any part of the world. Mm -hmm. People are different in terms of race, color, education, classes. Yeah. So how do solve or get it to harmonize still a big issue for the government and mm -hmm. the other one you may what you mentioned volunteer work volunteerism will that help to combat the racism volunteerism uh, yes because when people meet you and you talk to them mm -hmm. they um you know first of all they think all jamaicans are aggressive okay uh, they're going to shoot you or something mm -hmm. But yes. when you yeah, but when you meet someone pleasant, yeah, um, you Change know, the, you realize, yeah, it's only it's only the, the bad apples in every basket. Mm -hmm. You know, they are good people. Yeah. They um I was involved with the flag raising ceremony of Jamaica's 50 years of independence. Yeah. And um and this was done in the city of Markham. Mm -hmm. And uh we all you know, so they they had, as a result of that um, that anniversary, they published a book, and mm. in a large coffee table type book that I gave the mayor of Markham yeah. were hundreds of Jamaica people who had contributed to to Canada. Mm -hmm. Nurses, if you go any hospital you go, you see black nurses, and yeah. speak to them, they are Jamaicans. Okay, and doctors and mm -hmm. teachers. Yeah. And my my school friend, the same one in my village, he's a yeah. professor in Alberta. Okay. The other one is a vet in, in the States. Yeah. You know, they have contributed wherever they went, they contributed. So mm. not all Jamaicans are violent and turn to crime. Okay. Yeah, it's the ones who like in every nation, the ones who mm. are struggling. Yeah. And they have to resort to crime. Yeah. Or they lack, they lack their lack parental upbringing. Okay. But there are many who have uh, who have succeeded and contributed to whichever country they go to. I see. And through social media now, I get a lot of um, e mm -hmm. uh, emails about 
the professor in which university or the pioneer in England, they are Jamaican based or their parents were immigrants there. I see. You know, yeah, so you know, we, we, are, we all can contribute. Yeah, we, we have to tell our story. Otherwise, other people don't know. Right? Yes, that's right. So we and we are to... lumped and we're lumped with the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, and also stereotyping, right? So, stereotyping. Yeah, so that, that's the thing. Yeah, you, you, you don't speak out, you don't tell your story, you don't tell people they, how we contribute to Canadian society. People don't know, right? So and, yeah, and that's and that's the habit of the older generation. Mm -hmm. They are humble. Yeah. They always say, "Keep quiet." Yeah. Every time I go, my my father tell, me, "Don't give trouble. Don't give trouble." Mm -hmm. You know. So as a result, the the pandemic has taught us to speak out. Yeah. The important thing is speaking out. Mm -hmm. and that's why some of our stories are not told yeah. because, like my aunt. It's not, it's not a pleasant, uh, they did not have a pleasant life. But they, mm -hmm. so they think by forgetting it, mm -hmm. it will be okay. And move on. But they yeah. don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, which, yeah. which, which you know, Joseph, as a next generation, mm -hmm. you, we, can, we have overcome that. Speak yeah. about the good experience, the bad experience, mm -hmm. and so forth. Excellent. Because someone will learn from it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you are so lucky that you got you got support funding to have your story told to have your book yes. published. But on the other hand, everyone has their own story, right? Do you recommend that they tell their story, write something for himself, herself, or for the yes. kids? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if it's published or not, right? So That's still, right. Yeah. And I met also a few little groups who are doing self-publishing okay. because okay. I've have I've forwarded a few people to them mm -hmm. who can do it on a small scale. Okay. Uh, because with Amazon now and um, and the and the media, the social media, you know, you, with mm -hmm. the computer now, things are possible. I see. Because okay. even even the book is a Canadian project, but it was printed in the states, coming up for from South Carolina. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know the world is shrinking. Yeah. You know, so there's no reason mm -hmm. why. But I I have written other books as well. When my father passed away, I wrote about his life. Okay. Because he used to tell me, but I didn't listen carefully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you hear your parents talking, yes. and they say the same thing over and over. You okay. know, some people like my yeah. aunt don't want to yeah. talk. Because it's bad experience, you know, it yeah. will go away. But yeah. my father had good experience because he was from the a good a village, yeah, and uh, a village that um, kept us cohesive. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to do the same thing. So I'm so uh, so I I'm I'm, I'm I'm doing the same thing as well by mm -hmm. uh, you know by 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 telling uh, or 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 just or just telling someone. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, um, like I am not that computer literate, yeah. your grandchildren can uh, take. And then, as I said, I I had done um, before, and all I did, all my um, all I did was to staple it together mm -hmm. to create a booklet. Yeah. So it doesn't really have to go to a publisher. Yeah. Because you could always print it and fold it over, staple it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, and because there are printers in your in your neighborhood mm -hmm. who can print it off on a eleven by seventeen. Yes, yeah, yeah. Fold it, staple it, fold it. Yeah, yeah. and they can get the pictures in for you too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that's good. Yeah, so basically, I tell you what to do. Uh, I'm I'm writing diary every day. Try to mem memorize it. Some of my past. And then giving my feelings on on that. So one day, I hope one day I can get the book published or at least collided. I mean, as as a book at that time. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, I wanted to also show you. Mm -hmm. Do I can see this? Yeah, I can see it. Yes. Yeah. When I was a president, I um, I got one of your awards at Chongjin. Okay. Don't you, yeah? Okay. Yes. That's so nice. just to let you know that you're yeah. featured in, in this the book. book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. That that I will give about 
almost 300 recipients. They are all from different backgrounds and their own story. That's really great. So if yeah, one so day that everyone can tell a story, that would be a very truthful, very informational. Yeah. Not only that, but this is one of your achievements. Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah. and you should also document it as well for the next mm -hmm. generation of yeah. whatever you are doing. Thank you. And, yeah. yeah and, and this one too, I would like everyone to know mm -hmm. that uh, the Toronto Heritage Alliance yeah. got permission from the Chinese Cultural Center okay. to, to post their uh, this wall mural. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Hatga Odyssey. Oh, okay. And it shows a world map and yeah. where all the all the the Hatgas went mm -hmm. and their story as well. I see. It's a 40-foot it's a wall and the yeah. Chinese Cultural Center is open seven days a week. Okay. You can just pop in and see it. Yeah. So and and the other things that you know I'm doing that my Toronto TV for 20 years and mm -hmm. I got about 10,000 videos. What I do is like I'm trying to like categorizing it and make it become an online video library. So that means that once it's finished up, when you go onto my video library online anywhere in the world, you search Carol Wong, then you got your videos, what happened in, in Toronto, mm -hmm. and and that's collection I have you on different locations, different events. So then we have like uh, Tony Wong, we have uh, Michael Chen, I mean, all the many celebrities in Toronto. I'm trying to do it there. It, it takes me two or three years already, but still need two or three years to finish that. Yes. My point is that uh, folk is good, very collectible, but at the same time, that's limited edition. You can have a thousand books printed, give it to 1,000 people, and that's it. But mm -hmm. if we put it online, you can at least stay there for 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then it's accessible anywhere in the world. Okay. So the technology helping us to preserve our our history, mm -hmm. our you know, our records. So that's that's the good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So at the same time, we can have more people telling the stories, right? Mm -hmm. So then it makes our life more fruitful, makes the history, makes the country more beautiful. That's what oh, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would be also very helpful for people mm -hmm. who really think, oh, my story is small. You know, mm -hmm. it's not insignificant. Yeah. But online, they, they would feel free to contribute. Yeah. Uh, I have different opinions. They, uh, I I do know a few people writing their biography, their story now. All right, so then I ask myself: Is my story is telling? I mean, telling people my story, or telling myself my story? We have been living that so many years, right? Mm -hmm. If we ourselves go through details, go through the history, and tell us, memorize it, revitalize those memories, right? So, yes. so that means, if that's the case, that means that my story, I tell my story to myself. Okay. Mm. Yeah. If somebody interested to, to see my story, go for it. Right? Yes. Yeah. So the good thing is that I do try to rememberize or try to go through back my history, my story. Mm -hmm. And and then finally say, hey, that's my life. Right? So that's my new perspective. Say, hey, write something for myself, for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> then we can tell tell the happiness, sadness, problems, difficulties. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're telling somebody, say, hey, that may be my own piracy, my own secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is sharing. It is sharing your humanity. Yeah. Okay. No, we are not robots as yet. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's, yes. that's, that's better than AI, right? So. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and I must tell you also, too, I published yeah. this book. It's called Way Family History. 
Okay. And it is um, it's actually accepted in the Chinese uh, archives uh, oh, okay. in the U of T. I which, see. Is, which is a Chen Yu Tung uh, Asian okay. Studies at University oh. of Toronto. Okay. And this is uh, coincidental, but an uncle passed away mm -hmm. at the age of 97 in I Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And they found uh, the Chinese uh, had Chokpu, which is a family record. Yeah. I think Cantonese would be what? Chokpu? Chokpu, Chokpu, yes. yes. Yeah. And I it goes. Yeah, but, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. So those Jokpo is put in, I mean, stay, stay in the in the Qi Tong and they can go through the history. I think if yes. you go back to China, you still see the, those Qi Tong, yeah. Yes. When I went back to our village and I went to the temple, okay. it's there. And my yeah. father, you know, the, the, the Hakkas outside of uh, yeah. China, sent mm -hmm. back the information yeah. to the village mm -hmm. and they make a record. Yeah. And they also select the generation name. Yes. Well, my Chinese name, you that's know, true. and that's uh, true, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so that's good. But then oh. at this Chokpu now, a copy of it, somebody he didn't even realize it. As a young boy of eighteen going to Central Jamaica, okay. they had put a copy in his belongings, I and see. he had it there for over eighty years, and nobody knew. Oh, so that when I got it, um, even my Mandarin teacher could not read it. Yeah. So I we had to raise funds. The Williams family had mm -hmm. to. Um, I, I say Williams because the British gave us the name Williams when they couldn't yeah. pronounce Mui. Mm -hmm. and, um, our first ancestors was Mui Fuilian. Yeah. So they say Fuilian, William, Fuilian, William, yeah, yeah, eventually William. Williams. Okay. And the immigration officer doesn't realize the Chinese say the um this for, the family name first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, like Lao, Lao oh, Joseph. Wow. Yes. So they thought the last name was Philem. Philem, <laughs> yeah. Eventually it became a Welsh name Williams. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. But wow. uh, uh yeah. so they so we have a Williams uh family get together. Okay. And we raise funds to pay the translators thousands of dollars because mm -hmm. it's in ancient Chinese. Yeah. And it goes uh, from 661 BC from when the Hakka started okay. in Hernan, Shanxi yeah. province, eventually yeah. coming down to Jiangxi, yeah. who claimed they are the cradle of Hakka civilization. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is near the Yellow River Basin and okay. coming to Fujian, Neijian. Yeah. And then eventually Guangdong. That's true. So, so we so this map in um, the Chinese Cultural Center, this wall map, will show the five major migrations of the Hakka people. Okay. Yeah, I've been uh, there. Next time yes. I, will, I will take a take a detailed look about that. Yeah. That's right. And you can see my article about Jamaica. So we each diaspora wrote. Wrote a, um, a little a little um, blurb on on growing up in which country. Okay. And as well, if you come to our, um, we're having once a month cultural get together uh, with our federal grant. Then, okay. uh, then you will come and you hear the Mejian, the Moyen Hakka dialect, mm -hmm. different from the Dongun Hakka dialect, which our family speak. And yeah. also the Jiangxi <laughs> dialect. <laughs> yeah. So that is going to be very, um, very uh, interesting. Yeah. Some words, most words are similar. Yeah. And, and it's similar to the English and the Scottish and yeah. the Irish. Absolutely. It's the same English. Yeah. But um, as, they, as they migrated all over the world, yeah. you add little different idioms and different uh, pronunciation. That's true. So, yeah, so that's another interesting. <laughs> and I learned my Hakka from my grandma. grandma so, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, my actually, I, I was raised by my grandma in Hong Kong. So, that's mm -hmm. my. And a little bit uh, Hakka is, is from her. So, yeah. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, and, and it's good. That's another, that's another thing to, you know, us that migrate and do not have grandparents. Yeah. Your parents are so busy and yeah. you're integrating in a new country that yeah. we're losing the culture. Mm -hmm. 
So as a result, this is why we are very pleased that we would get the federal grant to okay. help us perpetuate, you know, okay. all that. Okay. And the, the World Hot Dog Conference is really keeping us together. That's so true. I was pleased to have gone to um mm -hmm. I was pleased to have gone to Malaysia for the 30th World Conference. Yeah. When when um when Canada got the bid to host the next one, which we just had. Yeah, that's true. And that's most true. of all for me, um, mm -hmm. was that after that I went as a delegate of the city of Markham. Okay. So we joined with Vancouver to have one bus mm -hmm. to uh, we fly to China and we toured the um the Hakka cities. Okay. So we have been to Meiji and Jiangxi mm -hmm. and um Guangdong all over. Mm -hmm. and so we were able to um to see the Hakka Tulu. Mm -hmm. You know, so, the roundhouses. Yeah. Yes, the roundhouses. Yes. That the UNESCO Heritage uh, had uh, mm. had um, declared. Yeah. And when I was the president of Chongjin as well, what the, my our first air trip was mm -hmm. to go back to China and go to the Hakka oh, villages. Tulao. Yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah. And the Tulao was already for mm -hmm. um for viewing. It It's mm -hmm. not dilapidated. There were some that dilapidated. Yeah. But they had fixed it because the Chinese government um, realized what it was. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, but um, when the American spaceship was over China, yeah. they saw they saw the Tulu, yeah. and they, and they thought it was. Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. No, no. Yes, <laughs> they, they thought, they so it, a, right? Yes, yeah. so they contacted Beijing. Yeah. You know, and um, in fear. Yeah. And then when the government went to check, it yeah. was just Hakka people living peacefully yeah. and yeah, together. Just the res <laughs> residential buildings, no? <laughs> yes, because it looked like um, nuclear sites and it, yeah. or it looks like a rocket launch, you know? I don't think so, yes. But okay. that's something I wanted to show the other hot dogs. How yeah. they how they preserve themselves and mm -hmm. help each other. Okay. And yeah. Another thing I emphasize in each book about okay. the three main Hakka values based mm -hmm. on Confucius teaching. Yeah. First, you respect elders. Mm -hmm. Second, you help each other. Third, you educate your young. Okay. So they are the and we I think they have succeeded. Mm -hmm. When I see my children as professionals. Yeah. You know, and also we're helping each other. I see it in Jamaica. Yeah. If we have a store six miles away, you're mm -hmm. out of sugar or flour, we send a bag over and lend you until you get your supply. Okay. You know, stuff like that. That's good thing. Yeah. So I've, I've witnessed that. And of course, respect my elders. Mm -hmm. My children know that they cannot call you by your first name. Mm -hmm. You're either Mr. Law or Uncle. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. So uh, my last question is that uh, you say you are dragon lady. So yes. you call yourself dragon lady or somebody called you a dragon lady. What's the origin? Why why you become a dragon lady? <laughs> um, each of these books are called Letters to My Grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And they are they have a subtitle. Yeah. So <laughs> this is so uh, volume volume one is from Jamaica to Canada and mm -hmm. back. And then my second one is now from Canada to Hong Kong and back. Okay. So my third one now, <laughs> it's called Becoming a Hakka Dragon Lady. Okay. So in here it tells you that we had we had a Toronto Hakka uh, conference, mm -hmm. just Toronto Hakka conference, not the world. Yeah. So we started that at York University. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they had they had the, the first one, and I was a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I learned and I saw what went on. Yeah. So when, and it's every four years. So in two thousand and four, mm -hmm. I decided to volunteer. Okay. And when I came on and I saw things were not going right, mm -hmm. I like a hot dog woman. Yeah. I became. <laughs> I started ordering the men around. And yeah. getting things organized. Okay. And as a result, they used to say, "Do this, otherwise the Jamaica, the the, the um the, the dragon lady 
will 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 be angry okay. or they say dragon lady says do this and do that yeah. yes so as a result after the conference now mm-hmm. everybody when we had this celebration dinner you know okay. they're applauding thing and they're whispering dragon mm-hmm. lady you know, yeah so forth but they were praising me because it was a success okay and then i decided since they were whispering mm-hmm. and uh in fear yeah. i decided to have the my email as yeah. dragon lady okay and then i t- then i started making jokes when i became yeah. the president of chungjin because now all we learned at the conference i wanted that to go back to this hakka association Okay. And then, yes, and then I would say uh the dragon lady and uh, my email dragon lady so slowly mm-hmm. it became a term of endearment. Okay. Because uh, instead of running the the uh one week the weekend it's a weekend the conference in three yeah. days. Mm-hmm. Now I'm at the association as president for four years and over that time we have time to be friendly mm-hmm. and they see the dragon lady is harmless. Okay. All I'm doing is making sure everything goes smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the yeah. dragon lady became a term of endearment. I see. And, and I can't shake the reputation. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> But it doesn't matter because um, the uh, I, my email the dragon lady too because yeah. I know a uh, dragon lady one is the Empress Dowager Sisi. Mm-hmm. And she she had done uh, good deeds and bad deeds, but she made a difference in China's history as well. Okay. <laughs> so yes. hopefully this Jamaican uh, Canadian Chinese Canadian. Um, dragon lady will do as well in her life's journey. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's nice talking to you. All right. Expecting <clears throat> waiting for your fourth book coming out, uh-huh. and then uh, I. I, I, from your talking, I do see you really enjoy your life and and mean contribute to the to the country, society, and everything. Okay, so keep up the work, and then I'm definitely sure we'll talk again. All right. Yes, and thank you for giving me this opportunity, Joseph. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.